making their beds as well. You have your own theater today for surgery, where the other nurses and medical staff are getting prepared for your surgery. Yep. They're setting up all the tools and equipment they're going to need, doing counts, things like that. Yep. So my job is to come make sure that you are in the right place and are the right person and are for the right surgery, as well as answer any questions that you might have about the process before we head in. Awesome. Okay. So let me just grab my notes here. I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, make sure everything's in order, and you please let me know if you have any questions while I'm going through everything. Okay, perfect. So, can you please tell me your name? Okay, perfect. And your birth date. Perfect. And can you show me your wristband on your arm, please? I need to confirm that it matches. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, perfect, yeah. And your patient ID number matches what I have on my documentation as well. Perfect. Who, um, who was your surgeon today? Who did you have your consultation with? Dr. Cleaver. Okay, Dr. Cleaver. Just perfect. That is the room I am assigned to today. They are very lovely. Yep, yeah, one of the nicest surgeons we have on our team. You are very lucky. Don't let the scary last name scare you too much. <laughs> and then what are you here for today? What surgery are you having? A total hip replacement. Whew. Okay, sounds good. Total hip replacement. Perfect. Have you ever had a surgery before? Okay. So you have. When was that? Okay. So a couple years ago. Any issues with that surgery that we need to know about? Did you have any excess pain? Any difficulty falling asleep? Any uh, difficulty in the recovery room? Anything like that? No. Okay. No issues. Perfect. Okay. It's always good to know not every surgery is different, so it's not indicative if you had one bad surgery that you have another one, but it's nice to know if you had a reaction or any issues with anything just so we can help you along this time. Thank you. 
to yes or no to receiving blood products during the procedure if you do need some. Yeah, so based on our normal practices for our internal hip replacements, you should not require blood transfusion during the procedure. That being said, if you are bleeding a little bit more than normal or we're having a difficulty time stopping any bleeding, there is a chance that we may need to give you a unit or more of blood during the procedure. Not likely, but technically possible. So some people, depending on religious, cultural, personal preferences, decide not to have that. So if you do not want to have blood products during the procedure, just do not sign that line there. But if you do and you're consent and you're okay with that, then I need your signature, please. Okay, so I'm gonna give this to you. There you go. Please just sign that. There you go. Okay, perfect. So that's just good for us to know for safety for you and for us that you are interested in having blood products if you need them. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna take that back from you. Thank you. I'm gonna sign your consent form as well because I witnessed you signing everything. I am in clear mind. I see that you are in clear mind, so I will sign that for you. So and burnt. There we go. Okay, so that is all the big important information that I need to gather from you. How are you feeling? I know it can be a little stressful going into surgery for sure. But I know you've had it before, but that doesn't make it any easier, and I totally am sympathetic to that. Yeah, I promise myself and the whole team is going to try to make our best to make it as comfortable as possible for you. Would you like a heated blanket when we get into the OR? Okay, perfect. I can make sure I'll grab two. I'll grab two. Because, yeah, it can get a little chilly in there for sure. Yeah, we always kind of keep our OR's nice and chilly just to keep everything as sterile as possible. We don't want anyone overheating, so it is very, very normal to get very chilly in the operating room. So I'll make sure we have that. Do you need to use the washroom before we go in? No? Okay, perfect. That's also great. So, I'll kind of give you a rundown of what's going to happen from here until we head in. So now that you're all set in bed, everything's been checked out, we are going to roll your stretcher into the theater. I will be guiding you. And once we get into the room, we are going to slide you over with your help, or we can do it for you, from the stretcher bed onto the operating room table, which is another different type of bed. Okay, and we'll move over with your blankets and things so you're nice and warm. From there, once you're on the uh, table, we're going to check your wristband again and ask you the same questions I just asked you about your name, your birthday, type of surgery, things like that. It's not that we didn't remember. It's that we have to double, triple, quadruple check everything just for safety. It's part of the pre-surgical checklist that we do. Yeah, so if it feels like you're being asked the same questions over and over, it's because you are, but it's just for your safety. So once that is done, we're going to get you all secured and safe, and then the anesthetist or anesthesiologist, depending on where you work and what you prefer, they will be connecting an IV into your arm. Have you ever had an IV before? Yep, yeah, okay, if you've had surgery before, then chances are yes. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, I'm not going to lie. Getting a needle is never fun, but it is a small little brick once it's done, it's over. And that is how they are going to give you the medication so that you can sleep during the procedure. Yeah. So once the IV is in, they're also going to take a round of your vitals. So something on your finger to monitor your oxygen, blood pressure cuff on your arm, some stickies on your chest, one, two, and three, just to monitor your heart. And yeah, that's just going to be how we're making sure that you're stable and comfortable during the procedure. Great. So once that's all set and the surgeon has come in and asked his questions and stated what is happening on the record, then the anesthetist will start to give you some medication that makes you feel very sleepy. Yeah. You're going to kind of feel like, like dizzy sometimes people feel, or they kind of just feel like warm and heavy, and you're going to slowly drift into a slumber. Yeah. So because you're having a total hip replacement today, you are having a general anesthetic, not just a sedation. Would you like me to go over the differences? Sure. Okay. So for a general anesthetic, you are being fully fully, fully put to sleep. And what I mean by that is, it's the same medications as you use for a sedation, but instead of, so I guess maybe I'll explain the sedation first. Let's not get ahead of myself here. So sedation is like a light procedure, um, medication given to you to make things a little easier. So enough medication that you feel loosey, goosey, floaty, but you still breathe for yourself and you're still technically a bit more aware of your surroundings, even though you'll have no memory of the procedure whatsoever. A general anesthetic, on the other hand, is completely different. You get a bit more of all the medication, so you are knocked out fully. And once you're fully asleep, then the anesthetist and the surgical team will insert a breathing tube into your mouth. 
machine called a ventilator and it is going to regulate your breathing, making sure that you're getting enough oxygen in and out to perfuse all your organs and your brain. Yeah, so while you're on a general anesthetic, you are not breathing, your heart is still beating, but that, like nothing else is happening and you are just existing in the deepest nap you've ever taken. And then once the procedure is done, everything is closed, everything is over, then the anesthetist starts to wean the medication off, take the tube out, and you will wake up. Yeah. Usually, a lot of times, people wake up very disoriented, because for you, it's gonna feel like you fell asleep, and then you woke up right away, like no time in between has passed. It's not gonna feel like you've been laying there for an hour or two hours, anything like that. It'll be instantaneous for you. So, do your best to try to calm yourself when you wake. You will feel quite disoriented. That's very normal. But just try to remember that you're okay. You're in a safe space, even though it feels kind of funny. Yeah. So that once you're awake, our team will roll you over to the recovery room. You'll still be a little delirious, and that's normal. The recovery team nurses are going to take your vitals, ask you questions, check your surgical site, things like that. And then once they deem that you're awake enough, they will take you back to your unit. Yeah. So it's kind of like a quick little stay. You get checked in, go to your theater, have surgery, go to recovery, go back to your unit. Easy peasy. And then when you're back on the unit, that's when the nurses will help you like go for a walk, have a shower, use the washroom, things like that. Okay, perfect. So I think that's enough of me rambling. So sorry to just 